Alexander the Great was king of Macedonia from 336 BC to 323 BC. He ruled a vast empire stretching from the Balkans to present-day Pakistan. Alexander the Great greatly influenced the world of his time during his reign and left traces on the future. Professor Paul Cartledge, from the Department of Greek Culture at Cambridge University, said, during his 13-year reign, Alexander struck the Greek and Middle Eastern skies like a meteor, transforming everything he touched, often brutally, and dominating the ancient world, and with that, our world was never the same again. It wouldn't have happened. Says. Alexander's victories also made him a legendary figure and an inspiration for generations to come. Cartledge says, Alexander the Great was the most famous person who ever lived, back in the modern internet age. His astonishing career of conquest inspired not only Caesar and Augustus, but also Mark Antony, Napoleon, Hitler, as well as other world leaders in the West. Says. Pierre Bryant, honorary professor of history at the College de France, wrote in his book Alexander the Great and His Empire that, despite his military successes, Alexander did not gain the respect of some of his people, according to the records, and even had some of those closest to him killed. He writes, The personality of Alexander the Great was a paradox. He had great charisma and a strong personality, but his character was full of contradictions, especially in his last years. However, he had the ability to motivate his army to do things that seemed impossible. Alexander was born around July 20, 356 BC, in Pella, the administrative capital of ancient Macedonia, in northern modern-day Greece. He was the son of King Philip II and Olympias, one of Philip's seven or eight wives, and was brought up in the belief that he was divinely born. Guy McLean Rogers, professor of classics at Wellesley College in Massachusetts, in his book Alexander, Olympias, from childhood, made him believe that he was descended from heroes and gods. None of his formidable successes could undermine that belief. He writes. Alexander's father often went on expeditions, conquering neighboring territories and suppressing rebellions. That's why he was mostly away from Alexander. Still, Abernethy says that King Philip II of Macedonia was one of Alexander's most influential role models. Philip set the stage for Alexander to be given an important education and ensured that he was educated by Aristotle. His education instilled in him a love of knowledge, logic, philosophy, music, and culture. Aristotle's teachings will come into play in his view of his new peoples in the empires he occupied and conquered, this would allow him to admire and protect different cultures. Alexander watched his father's campaigns and victory after victory almost every year. Philip transformed the Macedonian army from civil warriors into a professional organization, with Ian Worthington, professor of history and archaeology at Macquarie University, in his book Philip of Macedonia, Philip suffered serious wounds in the wars, for example, he lost an eye, broke his shoulder and injured his leg. He writes, Cartledge writes in his book Alexander the Great that Philip decided to leave his 16-year-old son in his place while he was on a campaign away from Macedonia. Alexander seized this opportunity by defeating a Thracian people named Mede and founding a city named after him, Alexandria. Abernethy Alexander felt the need to challenge his father's authority and supremacy and wanted to outdo him. Says. Ancient records, such as Plutarch's lives, show that Alexander and Philip became estranged later, during Alexander's teenage years. Abernethy may have resented Alexander's father's many marriages and the children born to them, and saw them as a threat to his position. Already his mother, Olympia, was exiled to Epirus in western Greece. Says. Philip was killed in 336 BC while celebrating the wedding of his daughter Cleopatra, not the famous Egyptian queen. The person who stabbed her was said to be Pausanias, one of Philip's ex-boyfriends. While murder refers to jealousy and betrayal, as outlined by the ancient Greek historians Clitarchus and Diodorus Siculus in the Library of History, other ancient sources such as the epitome of the Philippic history of Pompeius Trogus suggest that Pausanias, Alexander, and his mother were also killed. It is suspected that he may be part of the larger plan for which he was sought. At the time of his death, 
Philip was considering invading the Persian Empire, also known as the Achaemenid Empire, and at its height this empire stretched from the Balkan Peninsula to present-day Pakistan and repeatedly sought to conquer the Greek world. According to Abernethy, Philip's dream passed on to Alexander, in part, through his mother, Olympias. It fed Alexander's burning dynastic ambition and told him it was his destiny to invade Persia. Upon his father's death, Alexander acted quickly to consolidate his power. He enlisted the support of the Macedonian army and frightened the Greek city-states that Philip had conquered into accepting his sovereignty. After campaigns in the Balkans and Thrace, Alexander took action against Thebes, a city in Greece that was about to revolt. He conquered and destroyed the city in 335 BC. With the suppression of Greece and the Balkans, he was now ready to launch a campaign against the Persian Empire. Cartledge writes that while Alexander had his own reasons for expanding eastward, the official reason for wanting to conquer the Achaemenid Persian Empire was to avenge the invasion of Greece by the Persians under King Xerxes the Great in 480 BC. However, Alexander ironically, the Persian King III. He often fought Greek mercenaries while leading a campaign against Darius. Moreover, according to Siculus, Sparta, a notorious city that lost its king and 300 warriors in a Persian invasion attempt, the Battle of Thermopylae turned against Alexander, going so far as to ask the Persians for help in the Spartans' efforts to overthrow him. However, Alexander was quite successful against Persia. His first major battle against the Persians was in 334 BC. He fought at the Battle of Granicus in western Turkey not far from the ancient city of Troy. The ancient Greek historian Arianus writes that Alexander defeated a force of 20,000 Persian horsemen and an equal number of infantry. He then advanced along the western Turkish coast, taking the cities and depriving the Persian fleet of its bases. The second and perhaps most important battle he won was the Battle of Issus in 333 BC. This battle took place near the ancient site of Issus in southern Turkey, north of Hatti and Iskenderun. In this war, the Persians were led by Darius III himself. Arianus exaggerates that Darius had a force of 600,000 men, and initially against Alexander, who was hesitant to fight, Darius settled on a large plain where he could gather his strength effectively. Darius is said to have thought of this as a sign of cowardice. Ariana said, one courtier after another provoked the Persian king by declaring that Darius was going to trample the Macedonian army with his cavalry, says. Thus, Darius renounced his position and chased Alexander. At first, this went well, and Darius' troops got behind Alexander's force. However, Darius' army had been driven to a tight spot where the Persians could not use their superior numbers effectively, at which point Alexander mobilized his forces against the Persians. Alexander's experienced army proved to the Persians too strong, and in the end Darius fled with his army. Darius is in a hurry, he left most of his family behind, including his mother, wife, infant son and two daughters. Arianus writes that Alexander ordered about Darius' family that they be honored and addressed royally. After the war, Darius offered Alexander a ransom by marriage for his family and alliance. Arianus writes that Alexander rebuked Darius in writing, Whenever you send word to me in the future, address me not as your equal, but as king of Asia, and if you need anything, let me know as lord of all that is yours. Alexander then moved south across the eastern Mediterranean, continuing a strategy designed to deprive the Persians of their naval bases. Many cities surrendered, but some, such as Tyre, on an island in modern-day Lebanon, fought and forced Alexander to besiege. In 332 BC, after Gaza was besieged and taken, Alexander entered Egypt, a country that had experienced intermittent Persian rule for two centuries. On the north coast he founded Alexandria, the most successful city he ever built. Arianus wrote, a sudden passion for the project seized him, and he determined for himself where the Agora was to be built and how many temples to build and to which gods to dedicate. Alexander claimed the title of pharaoh and, according to Cartledge, sought to tie himself to the lineage of Egyptian rulers in a traditional ceremony. He nearly crowned himself pharaoh in Memphis, the ancient capital of Egypt, so that not only did he endear himself to the Egyptian masses, 
but he blended the ancient and still powerful Egyptian priesthood with the new Egyptian monarchy, Cartledge says. By taking control of the eastern Mediterranean and Egypt, Alexander had successfully deprived the Persians of their naval bases and was now free to move inland to conquer the eastern half of the Persian Empire. He fought the Persians at the Battle of Gagamila in 331 BC. According to Arianus, near present-day Erbil in northern Iraq, Alexander faced up to one million soldiers. The estimates of modern scientists on this subject vary, it is generally thought to be a hundred thousand soldiers against fifty thousand soldiers. Scythian horsemen, Indian troops, presumably from present-day Pakistan, as the ancient writers called it, came from the northern borders of the Persian Empire and confronted Alexander. The battle soon turned into a battle of nerves. For a short time, the fighting was hand-to-hand. -hand, but when Alexander and his cavalry attacked the enemy with spears and drove them back hard, the Macedonian phalanx, in tight ranks and armed with spears, was advancing on the enemy. Darius, long in fear, saw terror all around him, he was the first to return and flee from the battlefield, writes Arianus. From this point on, the Persian army began to collapse, and with it the Persian king quickly drove away, but Alexander's eye was on him. Darius was later betrayed by one of his satraps and regional governors, Bessus, who then claimed kingship over what was left of Persia, and was killed by his own troops in 330 BC. Alexander sought a peaceful transition of power in Persia following the defeat of Darius. He needed to have a legitimate appearance to appease the public, so Alexander arranged for a noble burial for Darius. Giving noble funerals to defeated leaders was a common practice adopted by Alexander and his generals when they took over different parts of the empire, Abernethy said. Says. In addition, Alexander was influenced by the teachings of Aristotle, whose moral philosophy did not deal with forcibly Greekizing the colonized. As a result, Alexander would take away the political autonomy of the societies he conquered, not their culture or their way of life. In this way he would earn their loyalty by honoring their culture, providing security and stability even after the conquest was complete. Even Alexander himself adopted Persian dress and some Persian customs. The murder of Alexander's former commander, Parmenio, and his close friend Clytus, who is said to have saved Alexander's life at the Battle of Granicus, can be seen as a sign of how tired Alexander's men were from campaigning and how Alexander became paranoid. During Alexander's campaign in Central Asia, Parmenio's son Philotas allegedly did not report a conspiracy against Alexander's life. Enraged, the king decided to kill not only Philotas and other men considered conspirators, but also Parmenio, although he apparently had nothing to do with the alleged conspiracy. According to the 1st century AD writer Quintus Curtius, Alexander commissioned a man named Polydamus and asked him to hold his brothers hostage until he killed Parmenio. Arriving at his tent in the city where Parmenio was serving, Polydamus gave him two letters, one from Alexander, the other from Parmenio's son. Quintus Curtius wrote, as Parmenio was reading the letter from his son, a general named Cleander, who had assisted Polydamus in his mission, struck Parmenio with a sword blow, then in the throat, and killed him, he writes. The second victim of Alexander's anger was his friend Clytus, who was angry with Alexander for adopting Persian dress and customs. One day, after the two of them had been drinking, Clytus rebuked the king and told him that he should essentially follow Macedonian customs, not Persian traditions. According to Arianus, Clytus raised his right hand and said, This is the hand that saved you in the Battle of Granicus, Alexander. Enraged, Alexander killed him with a spear. Alexander eerily claimed responsibility for the act of murder. He kept telling himself that he was the murderer of his friend, and for three days he went without food or drink and lost himself, Ariana said. He writes. Alexander's days in Central Asia were not entirely unhappy. When his soldiers captured a fortress at the place called Sogdian Rock in modern-day Uzbekistan in 327 BC, he met and married Roxana, the daughter of a local ruler, and they had a son, but Alexander's lifetime would not be enough to see his son. 
Alexander entered the country that the Greeks called India, present-day Pakistan, though his men were exhausted and he was disturbed by their absence from their homeland. Plutarch explains in his work that Alexander made an alliance with a local ruler named Taxiles. This alliance allowed Alexander to use the city of Taxila as a base of operations and to obtain all the supplies he needed. These gains proved invaluable given Alexander's long supply lines. In return, Alexander agreed to fight Porus, a local ruler, who attacked him with an army of 200 elephants. The two armies met on the Hydasts River in 326 BC. Alexander waited for the opportune moment, he explored the area, built a fleet of ships and gave Porus a sense of security with his strategy. When Porus mobilized his forces, he found himself in a stalemate, his cavalry was not as experienced as Alexander's. Therefore, he put 200 elephants at the forefront, a number the Macedonians had never encountered before. Alexander responded by using his cavalry to attack the flanks of Porus' forces and quickly drove back Porus's cavalry. As a result, Porus' cavalry, infantry, and elephants became entangled. What made matters worse for Porus was that Alexander's soldiers attacked the elephants with javelins, and the wounded elephants furiously crushed both Alexander's and Porus's troops. As his army dispersed, Porus resisted to the end and was captured. Arianus writes that Porus was brought to the Macedonian king and said, Treat me like a king, Alexander. Impressed by Porus's courage and words, Alexander made him his ally. In 324 BC, Alexander's close friend, general, and bodyguard, Hathereshtian, died suddenly from fever. Abernethy says that Hathereshtian's death caused a drastic change in Alexander's personality. Alexander had always been a heavy drinker and it started to hurt him. He lost his self-control and compassion for his men. He became reckless, self-indulgent, and inconsistent, causing his men to lose their loyalty. He always had a fierce temper and was thoughtless, impulsive, and stubborn. Drinking made these traits worse. According to Abernethy, under these circumstances, most of his men insisted that Alexander return home. Advancing south from the Indus River, they fought a group called the Mali, and Alexander was badly wounded after attacking the city walls. After reaching the Indian Ocean, he divided his power into three. A heavily equipped force will take a relatively safe route towards Iran, the second, under his command, would pass through Jidroja, a largely desolate, deserted region where no major force had passed before. A third force boarding the ships would support Alexander's force and sail alongside them. The Jidroja crossing was a pathetic failure, and three-quarters of Alexander's troops died along the way. Due to the strong wind, his fleet could not keep up with the main force. Ariana said, the temperature rises in the water supply was not available, which destroyed a large part of the army, and especially the beasts of burden, he writes. Why Alexander chose to direct some of his power through Jidroja is a mystery. This may be because no one had ever tried to force such great power through him, and Alexander wanted to be the first. Alexander returned to Iran, this time as ruler of a kingdom that stretched from the Balkans to Egypt and present-day Pakistan. He arrived in Susa in modern-day Iran in 324 BC, where some of his most private advisors are known to have married. In addition to Roxana, whom he married in Central Asia, Alexander married two more women. One is three. The daughter of Darius was Barsine, and the other was Arian, a Persian woman identified as Perisidus. Plutarch writes that Roxana likely mistreated Alexander's two new wives and may have had them both killed after Alexander's death. In 323 BC, Alexander was in Babylon in modern-day Iraq, and his next major military target would apparently be Arabia at the southern tip of his empire. In June 323 BC, he was fired while preparing his soldiers, and his fever did not stop. He soon had trouble speaking and eventually died. Some argue that he was poisoned. However, his death may have been announced early at this time, according to Catherine Hall, a lecturer at the University of Otago in New Zealand. Shortly before his death, Alexander was asked to whom his empire should go. Despite having an unborn son, his answer was said to be to the strongest man. 
but there was no one strong enough to hold his empire together. Alexander's untimely death, without taking any action to ensure a smooth succession, opened the door to two generations of war between the field marshals, generals and lieutenants who had a stake in his vast empire, Cartledge wrote. He writes, 